What is going on everyone? Welcome to the video. As you can see, it is a gloomy day and a trunk filled of goodies. What we have here are four bags of fabric to fill in two five foot heavy bags that will be placed in the gym, roughly in that area. And we also upgraded the sound bar, brand new Sony uh, sound bar that is wireless to connect and as well as the subwoofer. So just do a little bit of upgrades, do a little bit at a time and just build in till the day that we get to reopen. So we're gonna be working on that this week. We got a bunch of online stuff to do. Everything is nearing the completion point. So uh, I'm super excited. Get to get my hands dirty a little bit, get to get myself doing more than what I'm used to, as well as keeping up with the training. So let's get to it. All right guys, so first order of business is checking out the sound bar. So we went ahead and bought, I don't know the model number, but we bought a Sony sound bar with a subwoofer. Originally we were using the Samsung one that was actually handed down to me. Um, it's a great system. The only problem is, is the one that is currently being used is actually non-Bluetooth. So you have to wire it to your phone, to your tablet or whatever it is. And it's, you know, it's, it's served its time. So the actual cord gets all scratchy if you turn it a particular way. And one of the things that I like doing is actually using my phone um, and trying to keep it somewhere else if I need to film, if I need to, for whatever reason, use it as a clock if I'm not using the Academy clock, um, if I need to use like the Blaze Pod app. So we went ahead and upgraded to one that is Bluetooth. Now I am thinking of hanging it somewhere around here because the ultimate goal is next thing to replace is that tv to something a little bit bigger and that'll serve as my desk monitor so i'm thinking of putting it somewhere here but my concern is will it be too far away from the subwoofer will it have like this weird effect so all right guys so next step is between the junior class and the rest of my classes so junior class is actually only 30 minutes i kind of treat that as like a warm-up to the warm up of my actual regular classes at, uh, towards the evening. So we're going to power up here, not really power up, but sustain. So we are going to get some electrolytes into our water. This is the Onnit Mineral Electrolytes Lime Flavor. And uh, if you guys saw my last video, which should be up by now, um, we are currently in a semi-annual sale where honestly you can save yourself some crazy amount of money uh, for pretty much anything, their apparel, for their pro um, supplements, for literally anything they got. So I am going to put this into my water. I'm going to give it a little shake. This should get me through tonight's class. And yeah, go ahead. Follow the link below in the description box. It'll guide you to them. Save yourself some money and treat your body right, man. If you guys um, didn't take the opportunity when the world has shut down to up your game, then you are one step behind already. Back to Matados, single Sinawali, Matados. In between those, you pick one angle one to be a trapilon. Okay, so let me show you what I mean by that. The first five, Matados. We have a first angle one, okay? 
we go with the single single wally. Here's our second angle one. Here's our third angle one for the third part or the second makabos. So either the first angle one, the second angle one, or the third angle one is going to be a terapilon. So subtract all intensity now and document where you implement it. First, second, or third. Okay? And then what I want you guys to do is change it every single time. <laughs> okay? I know that's asking for a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. But now's the time to do it. Now that we've gone past the lesson, these are the brownie points, okay? So give yourself an opportunity to experiment, to give yourself an opportunity to do it. Take away the pressure of being able to apply it and just go through the sequence, okay? Matados, single sinawali, matados, one, two, or three of the, the beginning of those sections, we make it a terapilo. Going, going past that is just for, for fun. Being able to put that in where we want, configure it. That, that's for fun now. I feel like to document that is kind of useless because it's so of its own that maybe it's like a one of one application. So if I ingrain that into your system, right? Matados with the terapilon, single sinawali, matados without it you're going to remember to only do it that way and you won't be able to configure it anymore. So really focus on Matatos on its own and then adding it, repeating it. Repeating it should be the first step, but adding something else or changing it with the variation that we learned today, that's all icing on the cake. That's all for situational placement, right? Like this particular position, opponent, scenario called for that. So that's why I did it. Okay, but the stuff that you do need to remember, obviously the basics and fundamentals are like our foundation, is the five steps of Matados. And really, if you want to incorporate in today's lesson, the four counts of singles in the world. Everything else is just on its own. Terapi alone is a lesson of its own. It's a, it's a, a piece of the puzzle of its own, right? Um, forehand arco, it's a piece of its own, right? So, um, this is the labyrinth that, that you'll start to be create in your mind. And um, this is the easiest way that we're going to be able to converse about it. How we're going to be able to talk to each other and be like, hey, I'm having issues with this technique. These first five counts. Hey, I'm having issues making the matados fit here. Okay, so we're talking about those five, but now we're talking about it in this way. And more of like a, a largo variation. Or, hey, I, I don't really feel comfortable applying a matados to a taller opponent. Okay, so we're talking about those five, but now we're talking about a different line, maybe more high line now. All right, so in turn, your ability to comprehend inputting flow drill names or fundamentals is going to be our universal language between everyone. Not that I'm trying to craft you into instructors, but I feel like... Um, naturally you'll you'll gravitate towards being able to instruct because of your ability of understanding the curriculum um, the way that you apply it, that's where your fighter instinct comes out some people can apply it better than others that doesn't mean that the other person understands it more they just understand the situation and themselves possibly their opponent more but they know what the drill is all right guys so in lesson number two of may cycle which is coming out very shortly we talk about a flow drill that's called the matados, which we interpret as a momentum killer. So we use a particular set to introduce it, but the idea is that I'm using a particular technique to shut you down because it's very difficult to stop someone when they're in the zone. If, even if they miss the first, second, third strike, every time they do a follow-up, it has a little bit more confidence, a little bit more power. So I need to find ways to shut you down. So what I did want to show you guys today is I want to show you basic strikes that we can use as momentum stoppers. Okay, so the very first one is very simple, is we do an angle one. So if you're coming in at me and I go whoop, I do it with a particular speed that when I do that, I kind of cut you off, right? So it's important to lunge our hips forward, lunge from almost like a open position to a closed position as we call it, and really attack with a lot of, um, a lot of vengeance, okay? So we're not really gonna hold back when we do that angle one. So very simple. Now, 
Uh, the second one that we're going to do is a backhand snap. The way that I like doing this is on a horizontal axis. So this would be what we consider an angle four snap. So my close position is very strong in terms of speed because I'm utilizing my lats. I'm squeezing nice and tight so I can explode into a strike. And a lot of times when you do that, you can kind of stay in this almost bladed stance. And a lot of the times people will use that in empty hand to throw a jab because it's much faster from that bladed stance position where it comes low. So I'm in that position here. I see coming in, pow, and I throw that backhand snap super quick. And most importantly, I come back to that close position. So if I feel like I need to follow up with something a little bit more bigger, then I can come back with an angle two, something that'll create more space, right? Now this third one here is within the matados itself, but it's an arco strike. So an arco strike in our curriculum is basically a circular strike. You could do it on the backhand side or the forehand side, but it has a, a, a level of width tick. It's a more of a whipping circle than it is a slashing circle. So from that same almost bladed closed position stance, I can use that in more of a vertical snap and be able to shut you down, right? That's gonna go right through their hand, uh, more so on the outside if, if they're in that same kind of position. And it allows me to bring my stick back naturally from my initial motion. So I don't have to pull it back myself. I can just follow all the way through and then I end up in that closed position once again. Okay, this last one I wanna show you guys is a little bit more complicated. So when we lower our stance a little bit and you'll kind of see this position in the matados as well. But I'm gonna do an angle four, but I'm gonna curve it. So it's almost gonna be like a half circle down to the ground. Okay, and I love doing this particular technique because it has an apex in its angle, which is working a lot of precision when I'm countering someone, but I get to hit the ground, and in most cases, I'll use that to bounce back up. So if I'm in a more bladed lower base here, I can strike, and then I can use that to cut down when I'm in this position here, bounce off the ground, and I can come back up. So if I'm standing over here, I see momentum, and I'll use that to explode, expand, and then use that to pull myself back up and be in a more guarded position where I can utilize a little bit more footwork. Because the lower I go, the less I can move. I can maybe lunge a little bit more with my hips, but it's much harder for me to step. So I'm gonna bounce and pull myself back up, narrow myself, bring my feet closer together, and then maybe I can move in a single sinawali and create distance. Cool? So four ways that you can cut someone's momentum off. Very important to understand the initial positions so you know where their strikes are gonna be coming from. All right, guys, so we're gonna end the video here. A little bit of an update. I decided to flip the mats to have gray borders and black inside. And I actually decided to create two rings. So we have that separated equally. We have a third ring down here, but we're actually gonna replace this set of mats with matching ones here. So that's gonna get rid of the issue of the lighter gray because uh, the supplier no longer creates these darker ones. So we're just gonna use the existing ones to create the border and then we'll have the majority of the black side uh, as the body of the mats. More things are coming. Heavy bag is going to uh, come in. They actually sent me the wrong one. So that's a little bit of a bummer. Stan should be in next week. So next video should have a ton of renovations and a ton of upgrades to show you guys. And a big surprise is coming your way. So if you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, this last little Kali bit that I showed you really pays its dividends if you train Anastasio Kali online and you train lesson number two of the May cycle. So you guys can check that out. Even if you're not a, a user right now, you can sign up for free and register for a free trial and that will give you lessons one and two of uh, basic access. So the matados will be in there. But with that being said, I appreciate you guys for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you're new to the channel. Let me know if you guys wanna see anything specific. But as always, stay safe wherever you are. And until next time, Catch you guys then.